Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a couple people did ask hand history questions, and I've also been getting them in various places. And this one actually came to us privately through YouTube, and I wanted to answer it because I thought it was kind of an interesting situation. So this hand comes from Bob B. Bob is 16, so this is not real money. This is him just playing at home with his dad and his brother. And he sent me this hand. They're just playing three hands and he wanted me to look at it, so let's fire it up. Okay, so in this hand, his dad is in the small blind, who he classifies as more wheat tight, and his brother's in the big blind, who he classifies as more of an aggro fish, so I'm just going to say aggro tard, and here we are. So, opens to 30 with kings, totally typical, ends up getting called by dad, ends up getting min 3 bet by the aggressive fish. So, in this situation, Hero decided to just call and I would always ask him why. Now, he said that he did this because he wanted to let his dad in the pot, and he thought that the Agrotard was 3-betting a very wide range of hands, so this would be the best way to go about it. Now, just going back one tick, one thing you want to think about is if you're going to call with the intention of letting the weak type player in, is how are you going to make much money from the weak type player, right? Is he really going to make huge mistakes post-flop, or are you just giving him a sick price pre-flop to come in and really suck out on you and not really offer you much the times that you're ahead post-flop? And also, it's not like if we call here that we can really ever expect the wheat type player to do a ton of raising, right? It's not like he's going to come over the top and four bet here. Maybe if he very specifically has like a pocket tens or something like that, but that just makes up such a small density of his range. I assume he would have normally just three bet his default big stuff. So I'm assuming that when he calls, it's all that kind of medium stuff that I don't expect him to do much four betting with. So I don't really see much reason to call here with that rationale. Now, he did say that he thought the 3-bet range was pretty wide. Now, with that in mind, I would just try to figure out how can I get that 3-bet range to make mistakes. Could I make a small 4-bet at him? For instance, could I 4-bet this to $100 and induce some shoves over the top or some lighter 5-bets or some, well, I have to call because it's only $50 more type things. So I would probably look to forbet this more than anything else. It'd be different if the small blind were a fishy opponent and, you know, by forbetting you'd blow them out of the pot a large chunk of the time, but a wheat type player or a nitty opponent's not really going to offer you too much pre-flop nor post-flop, and thus I'm not that worried about getting them involved. I'm more worried about maximizing value against that big blind. But here it decides to call, weak type player calls as well, not too shocked about that. End up flopping top set, I am kind of shocked about that. Check, face a bet, and here it decides to call. So at this point, it's one of those situations where if you raise, what's he going to continue with? You know, he'll probably continue with draws and he'll probably continue with big hands, like, you know, 6-7 or whatever. But ultimately, there's not a ton he's going to be able to continue with. There's not a ton of king X's left in the deck. And this is just one of those situations where I don't mind calling, trying to induce him to bluff out on future streets and go from there. I don't expect to get a tremendous amount of action from the weak type player, simply because it's not the kind of board I expect them to hit on a ton. I mean, if he has 8s, 9s, 10s, cool. If he has pocket 7s or pocket 6s, really cool. And he'll have a couple of draws, but there's still a ton of hands like Ace Jack and those kind of things that whiff the board that I don't think we're going to get much value from him, whether we raise or call. So it's just one of those where how can I, again, maximize value against that aggro fish? So he ends up calling, which is a little shocking, but it is what it is. Uh, nine on the turn, check, check, here decides to bet. So I like the fact that Hero's betting here. My only issue is with the size, and I'm not 100% sure why we're choosing such a small size. This is the kind of card that is opening up a lot of possibilities going into the river, right? There's a lot of river cards that are going to be ugly. Not necessarily backdoor hearts, but any 5, any 8, any 10 puts a 4 straight on board, and that can get really uncomfortable. And this is also the kind of card that could give people pair and draw type hands, right? 7, 8, 9, 8, those kind of things. And I expect that if people have those kind of hands, they're going to pay much more than just 120 with it. So because of that, I'd really like to see this, maybe something in like the 250 ballpark, something more value oriented. And if one of these guys does happen to have that case king, I really want to maximize value against that before, God forbid, the river throws up one of those bad cards where maybe we're not behind, but they're not going to pay off at that point either. So again, you have to think about cards, not only how they influence you and your comfortability, but also from your opponent's point of view, how comfortable they're going to feel if that card pops off. 
So we actually end up getting called in both spots, which is really weird. Eight on the river, face a donk bet, face a shove, and Hero decides to fold. So I'm really happy that Hero's folding in this situation. Uh, yeah, we're getting a little better than two to one, but I really couldn't have picked a worse river card. It pretty much fills up everything. Yeah, we beat two pair, but that's pretty much it. It filled up the spades, which is reasonable for one of these two people to have. It filled up four straights, and now we have a nitty opponent who's donking in this situation. I just don't think that we're going to be good here enough at the time. But again, I think had Hero played this hand differently, again, pre-flop, I probably would have played it differently. On the turn, I definitely would have sized it differently. And I just expect that this hand gets played very differently if you choose different actions and even if you choose different sizes on the turn. So the fold, I'm totally fine with. Actually, it turns out that the Wii type player had 9-5. I would definitely want to take a note on that, that they called that out of position pre-flop and that they check called a gut shot on the flop. I think that's really, really awkward and not something I would have expected. And then the Agritard has two pair and whatever. I would definitely note that he made that shove on the river. I highly doubt he's trying to turn that into a bluff. I think he thought he was doing it for value. And on that board against a weak type player, not something I would suggest doing. So Bob, thanks for the great hand and hopefully this gets you started the next time you find yourself in a similar situation. And if you or anyone else has another poker related hand or question, feel free to leave it on our Google Plus page. I'll leave a link for that in the description box. And also please make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this type of video. So same as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there and happy grinding.